Hello, let us continue our reading of the poem The Wits and Weddings by Philip Larkin. It continues in the same fashion. Yes, from cafes and banquet halls appears, and bunting dressed coach party annexes. The wedding days were coming to an end. So ultimately, in the previous section of this particular poem, Larkin dedicated his lines to describe the artificiality, the negative aspects that have to be associated with the marriages. Now it is being continued to be powerfully posited here. He said, yes, from cafes and banquet halls. So these are the places where the marriage ceremonies have been taken place. And burning dressed coach party annexes. So everywhere, this each and every term, burning dressed coach party, banquet hall, cafes, everything is being associated with the marriages. He says the wedding days were coming to an end. That means, as I mentioned, that it is the Whitsun weddings. So ultimately, you will find that uh, just before this particular day there were ample references of the marriages that are going to take place and now it is the particular time when these couples will board the train to go to London for their honeymoon. This will be indicated towards the last section of this poem and the party is coming to an end. All down the line fresh couples climbed abroad. So it actually indicates that throughout the stations, fresh couples are climbing abroad. The rest, that means rest of the people, it, it may indicate towards the relatives obviously. The rest, they stood round. The last confetti and advice were thrown. Now this is obviously something very interesting that here Philip Larkin is also indicating or he is using another figure of speech, Zyugma where you will find the confetti and advice were thrown. In Ziyukma, you will find two different nouns are used with the help of a single verb. And the verb may be related to one of these two, literally, but another, uh, the, the, another word or another noun that have been associated with this verb, it is not really applicable. But it is in sense of some kind of mockery, in sense of some kind of say critical temperament that the poets are using them you see to indicate something different now here you will find that fresh couples are climbing abroad the rest that is the rest of the people they stood round the last confetti and advice were thrown the confetti you know here were thrown with this particular terms uh, confetti these words can this word can be related the confetti is what thrown you know for the purpose of celebration these are actually happening but advices were thrown these are something very extraordinary and here the last confetti the last advices all these things have been classified or maybe uh, attached uh, in a single particular sentence the last confetti and the advices were thrown the advice were given from the elders regarding the future days regarding their activities and so and as we moved each face seem to define just what it's all about. Now, here you will find that Lurkin, just like a psychologist, Lurkin is trying to, you know, comment on the mindset of these people, whether it is the father, whether the mother, whether the aged personality, or maybe the child, the children, or maybe the young aged women who are not being associated with this wedlock. So ultimately, he says that as we moved, that means not only the poet, but also the, the couples who are sitting just beside him. As the train moved, each face seemed to define, that means the facial expression got changed. In front of the bride and bridegroom, in front of the couple, their temperament were to some extent, you know, masquerading. But when they are moving, the facial expressions are actually showing their actual mindset that Larkin is indicating here. Larkin says, each face seemed to define just what it saw departing. What is happening? Children frowned at something dull. 
to the children it seems oh what is happening it is not so much important for me okay now i have come to this particular station to see off my elder one but now the time is slipping you see it is the time for my play it is the time for my football it is time for my cricket or maybe any other play so what i am doing here I am just wasting my valuable, quote unquote, valuable time. So it seems to be something dull and they are frowning, you see. So children frowning at something dull. Fathers had never known success so huge. Father never known success so huge. Because, oh, successfully, I have married my daughter to a man. So that's why a success. You know, ultimately you can identify that the temperament, the actual focus of this particular poem that Philip Platton is indicating here, it is something mocking. So the fathers never know success so huge. And then again, holy farcical, promotion, farcical. The women who are there, the aged women who are actually, the, who have experienced such kind of you know marriage ceremonies, the women share the secret, now again a cynical term, like a happy funeral. Have you heard this time or these types of terms anywhere? Happy funeral. You know, funeral is associated with death. It is a expiatory rites that have been associated with funeral. But how can a funeral be happy? Is it indicating that marriage itself is happy, but ultimately marriage can be associated with a particular kind of funeral because it actually makes an end to one's life? Does Philip Lurkin say so? Is it indicating towards that? So it's a, it's a big question, obviously. A big interrogative mark. A mark of interrogation that Philip Lurkin is positing regarding the marriage itself. So here also you can find the mocking temperament, the cynicism, the cynical temperament of the poet is being indicated with such kind of expressions. So success so huge and holy first sickle. The women shared the secret like a happy funeral. While girls, the young girls probably, they're gripping their handbags tighter. Okay, it is indicating towards some some sexual pleasures that they were after, but ultimately they cannot get. So the girls gripping their handbags tighter, they are staring at a religious wounding, again another cynical term. It is something religious and then wounding, wounding what? Is it indicating towards the physical aspects, the physicality, or rather it is something, the negative term that can be related with them. So, whilst, while young girls, they're gripping their handbags tighter, they're stared at a religious wounding. So, these are up to this. Here you can identify a full stop. Up to this, these are the mental or physical or maybe facial expressions that the poet or maybe the persona, she, he is indicating, he is reading, quote-unquote reading, same reading that you can find at the first section of this particular poem. Free at last, and loaded with the sum of all they saw. So we are free, free from the relatives, free from the personalities, free from the masquerades. So free at last, and loaded with the sum, sum total of all they saw. It is actually referring to the experiences. We, now we means the borders, the couples, and at the same time, the poet or maybe the poet person who is sitting there. We hurried towards London, shuffling guts of steam. It is the steam engine that is going on. And, you know, it is taking speed again. The train is taking speed. It is moving towards London. The guts of steams are there. Now, it is go, go, the, the, the particular kind of rural background is been changing gradually. Now, fields were building plots. And... Poplars, poplars are huge sized the trees you see. Now fields are building plots and poplars cast long shadows over major roads. So now at the very beginning of this particular poem you have the reference to the short shadowed cattle. Why? Because it was noon. 
Now it is afternoon, it is gradually moving towards the evening. And that's why the shadows are long. So the fields were building plots. Poplars are casting long shadows over major roads. Is it a mere description? Or rather, if we consider this particular journey, this particular you know, journey by train, it is indicating the, the actual life, the journey of life of the poet persona then is it indicating towards the end of his life or something else? So these are the questions that you have to answer. Now fields are building plots and poplars are casting long shadows over major roads. And for some 50 minutes, that in time would seem just long enough to settle hats and say, I nearly died. That means this particular term, as you can see, it is in italics. So this is the time, after that particular time, after crossing the initial awkwardness, they could feel themselves, they could express themselves. And then he says, or somebody says, or maybe the couple say, I nearly died. So that particular term, can be associated or can be related with the typical formations of marriages that is going on, that are taking place within this society, that is being associated with the temperament of the poet, his cynical temperament, the death can be associated with one's own self, everything you see. He says just long enough to settle hats and, and say, I nearly died. A dozen marriages got underway. So ultimately, in this particular, within this compartment, Lurkin, or maybe the poet persona, he could identify a dozen marriages. That means a dozen couple, they are sitting. It will be continued in our next lecture. Thank you.